All right, we are at the Goodwill Outlet. It's actually Tuesday. Um, we've got some stuff going on tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some thrift flips, but we decided to see what they have because we didn't get so lucky earlier this week. I feel like they have the same things, but it's always a mystery that those same things are like, am I actually gonna get anything good or not? Because it's the bins, right? At the bins, it's by the pound. And then if we have time, we're gonna hit up Goodwill and possibly the desert industries that we went to last week. That the we one got... down on Welfare Square? Yep, that had all the Afghans, so. We find older things down there because it's an older community and so they've got more antiques I guess you would say and we'd like to be home by 3 30 so we have a couple hours all right look what's up found courier and ives it's a carson plate I'm gonna guess it's pewter I don't know That's... yeah we can look it up I love the Ottoman New England it's pretty I got here without a bag today, nothing, and we're definitely late enough in the day we're not going to get a cart. Oh, more. Yeah, we found two more. All right. I need to go find a bag. Okay. Well, that's kind of fun there. Look at that. This kind of looks like a wise man. It's carved wood. I'm just going to take this home. This is from Disney World. It's from, I think... Splash Mountain, and I know that ride's been torn down, so I'm gonna grab it, take it home, and see if it's worth anything. Look at this one. It doesn't look like it's handmade, but I love the fabric on it, so I'm gonna grab this one. I'm getting quite the pile here. Here's another one, it's kind of boho. I'm a little sad. I found an American flag over there just kind of all crumpled and being tossed around. I'm gonna fold it right and we're gonna take this home. It's kind of hard to fold it by myself over here in the corner, but I'll take it home and I'll have uh, one of the kids help me fold it up nice and tight. Any treasures? Uh, I did find this little bear like made out That's of vintage kind of fun. fabric. Man, that is a heavy duty pan. That weighs twice as much as the ones we have at home. Another divided tote. This last one I had had a wood handle, but this one's still good. Look what you found. Another one, and I like this one even better, and it's also the homemade one, because look. Oh, she's got the heart. Yep. One in my bag. Here's another vintage Afghan that's got like those colors that loves. I think I'm gonna leave this one here because see how it's all balled up? I try to get better conditioned ones. So this is just a comforter, but it's made in the USA, which I like. And it looks like an old Waverly pattern, which is totally coming back in style. I'm gonna grab it. Or Ashley sheet. I actually think this would be so cute for pillows. Wonder if that can be washed out. This is a 1928 edition, the little lame prints. It's got like interesting artwork in here and it's from originally from 1909, but it's a 1928 edition. I'm gonna grab it. We're stuck over here in the books because they're putting out new uh, Westward Ho by Charles Kingsley. They're putting out new bins. Release the Kraken. The new bins are out. This one says it's Reed and Barton. I'm guessing this is like aluminum, but it's tarnished, so maybe it is uh, tarnished silver Mayflower. I'm gonna grab this. Oh, that's a good one. What's the brand on that? Oh, Jessica Simpson. <laughs> it's cool. This is kind of fun. It's uh, looks like it's from Colorado, but it's an old hymnal. 
I'm not sure copyright on it, but there's a ton. Ooh, 1933. Yeah. Okay. 29th printing 1960. But look at all the sheet music and things in here. You think that's Waverly? Yeah, and they don't make their stuff anymore. Not that I can find. It's in good shape. That one's good. We actually just put one back that was my favorite that smelled like smoke, but cigarette smoke is not coming home with me because I don't know if I can get that out. Everything else gets washed and sanitized. So this is lime green, but I think it's good. It's not, it's not hand done, it's machine. It's got a tag on it. It's from India. Oh, maybe it, no, it is hand sewn. A lot of the India stuff is. Yeah, so that's hand. Okay, we'll get that one. So now that we're all done, we find a cart. We spent 76? 76. The most we've ever spent at the bins. We probably could have picked some more, but we're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> the, the find of the day was probably this guy right here. He's from Country Bear in uh, Disney World from the 70s, and he's worth between 50 and $100. So that's exciting. <laughs> he's going to go through the wash. We'll see if he survives. All right, $76 from the bins. We're back at Welfare Square. Last week they had all the blankets, but people now know that they have Afghans because they saw us come last week. So I'm not holding my breath that they're gonna have a bunch, but we'll see. Even if they don't, we got a ton of quilts at the Goodwill bins. Yeah, we cleaned up. We spent the most we ever have there. It's crazy though that $76 is the most we've ever spent at the bin. I know, right? When you buy, when you get your stuff by the pound, it really is a good deal. Zeb got me out my cart. Yeah. Are we doing separate carts today? I think we needed it last time, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes in here. So this is newer, but it's Gourmet Fitz and Floyd. It's like plates and cups. If it's all here for $8, I'll grab it. We're gonna check in here, but specifically, I need a big frame for some canvas art I made today with one of our new stencils. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. I'm always looking for things that need decoupage, but we have a bunch of stuff that needs painted currently. So I'm gonna try to slow my roll on that. Yeah, we bought a lot of stuff to be painted. Well, that's kind of a cool plaque. Is it resin? Looks like it's resin. I'm still gonna get it. That's really cool. I don't know, I'll have to measure it. $24. Okay. Look at this trunk though, Jamie. It's, I don't know. It's, it's kind of cracked up here. 15. The top is all roached though. Oh, I mostly just like this tray in the top that someone custom made. I'm actually currently on the hunt for a mirror for the shop bathroom. That's 20 bucks. I think I have some in the barn. What do we have hiding back here? No lid for it, probably had a lid, but honestly, I think that's pretty great for three, ah, three bucks. I thought that was, I thought that was two. I was gonna go for it. So proof positive that not every week is a win. Last week they were like loaded. This week I'm not seeing anything. So I'm glad we found a bunch at the uh, bins. This one is cool. That one's good. Yeah, I'll grab this one. All right, Zeb says yes on the purple one, so we'll grab this one too. I love this little egg. It's actually from Pier One. I like this one too. I don't know where it's from originally, but they're cute for Easter. They look good in the shop. This is a big piggy mug that somebody decided to use as a planter. But I'm gonna run this through the washer. Take it home for a dollar. This is three dollars. It's a little brass, like for espresso, I think. Three dollars is a little much, but I'm gonna grab it anyways. It's cute and brass. This is pretty old glass. Whether they go with yeah, the I think it is. Four dollars. I'm not like an expert on this, but my grandma loved it, so oh, yeah. gotta grab it. 
first rolling pin I think we found this week for two dollars. All right, how much did we spend? Twenty-eight dollars. Twenty-eight dollars. So yeah, how much? we're just over a hundred bucks today and a full back seat. I'm happy about that. Let's go get some lunch. I'm here for that. All right, it is the next day. Zeb is finishing up his tote from Waste Not Wednesday, and we have thrift flips to do. If you're new here, we thrift things every week that need to be refinished. Um, and occasionally we will sell stuff before we even do anything to it. So today we have a carousel horse, a rolling pin, a divided box, and a bench over here that we're gonna be redoing, and we're gonna just show you how we do it. So Zeb just finished painting the inside of this. This is the stencil that we did for Waste Not Wednesday. If you didn't watch it, we'll drop the link below. I like to do things in order that make sense to me. These are actually the most steps. This one's sold, this one hasn't. But you have to paint the middle, let it dry, stamp it, let it dry, and then do the handles. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these middles painted and then I'll move to the next project. So I picked this up at the bins. You saw that earlier in the video. It's actually a sheet. Um, and it's like a older out of print print and I love the look of it. So I'm going to remove this fabric, cover it with this. I may line it with a drop cloth first and then cover it with this, just depends. But we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and then I'm gonna paint this base white. And then we might just like bring back a little bit of the dark. I'm using cottage color and white linen. It'll just take a couple of coats has a built-in sealer, so once it dries, I don't have to do anything else to it before we stamp it. If you have thrift flips or home decor that needs an update, you can get the products that we use at jamierayvintage.com. Just gonna zip the top of this off real quick. Comes apart very easily. Same as the rolling pins, I'm gonna start getting some white linen on here and I'm just gonna paint it upside down because that way I won't miss anything and then we'll flip it over and paint all the top edges and things. So sometimes when you're painting, especially like a base coat, cause we're gonna to have to do a couple coats on this white over this darker wood, uh, I just get the paint on there and brush strokes are important. We don't want them going all crazy. So now that the paint's on, we're gonna come back, smooth everything out. And that'll help that lay flat. It, this paint does have self leveler. Since I've got the white out, we're gonna just base coat everything in white. This just slides up and down here right now. I'm gonna take that off and paint it. This also comes out but we're going to paint that all together, paint this separate over here, and everything's going white. This will eventually get decoupaged. I'm gonna put a paper on this. Not sure which one yet, but everything's going white today. I've got the one white brush out and we're just gonna paint it all the same color for ease of washing up and just keep cruising. This is glass and it's glued in really well. I'm not gonna paint the inside, that's fine. It's not distressed in there. Um, but we're gonna get rid of this machine distressing, or at least some of it. Some of it might come back through when I do my own distressing, but we're just gonna go right in here along the edge, and I will use a razor blade and some Windex to come back in some glass cleaner, and that should scrape off pretty easily. And if as long as your blade is clean and doesn't have any dents or dings in it, you won't scratch the glass. We get cast iron all the time, and usually it's pretty cheap. This was $4. I've got cast iron for as little as $2. This is an evil skeever pan and it's gonna clean up real nice. Just a wire brush and we're gonna go. Once I get all the rust out and all the major gunk and ooky stuff off of the pans, I'll take it inside. I'll wash it really good with soap and water and then we will re-season it with oil. All right, just got a little bit of oil. I got it warmed up so that it would dry out. Now I'm just gonna oil it and then I will get it really hot with this oil on here. And then we'll wipe off the excess and it'll be good to go. Got the fire going. 
let that get nice and hot, and then it's done. And we will ship it out. This one's already sold. So since this is getting decoupaged, I just wanted to lighten it up so that it was light and bright on the back. It doesn't need full coverage. These I did a little bit better as far as coverage goes because they're gonna be more visible. I might decoupage this heart too, we'll see. This is the kind of distressing I'm going for. This was that black pole coming up that the carousel horse sits on. And I gave this a heavy, heavy distress, and I actually really like that. I might clean it up a little more because I actually used the orbital, and it got a little streaky through this spot here, but that might just be covered up with the horse. I don't know yet. Let's do some decoupage on this carousel horse. I was going to kind of try to cut it out, but I'm just gonna wet cut it and we'll do a heavy distress just like we did on this piece here. Loving the way that came out. And also the uh, stand for the horse. I've got DIY's liquid patina in the crystal clear chandelier. It's what we've been using for decoupage for I would say about what, four or five years, six years now, somewhere in there. So gonna get that on there liberally. And I'm not decoupaging the front legs or the head of the horse, just this big flat surface here. Okay. And we're gonna put a liberal coat here on top. Don't wanna overwork it. This is rice paper. So just making sure that I've got some all on the whole body of the horse and the leg and the head. And then we will let that dry for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and wet cut it. While we're waiting for that side to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do this back half. I have a little bit bigger paper that I could have used with the tissue paper that we've got, the 18 pound tissue paper but I wanna do these new, I feel like they're really good, springy, and this lines up pretty good. It's not quite an exact match, but I'm happy with that there. So we've got three coats on here and it's dry. It's already got a built-in sealer, so I'm just gonna come with sandpaper and bring out all this dark detail from underneath and kind of distress along the edges. I'm using, I think this is That's 220. 220. So you can use 220 or 320 works pretty good. You don't want to go any lower on the number than 220 or else it gets kind of streaky. So I'm just going to do this to the whole piece, give it a little age, and then we'll be ready to reupholster the top. Time to wet cut this. And I'm just using the decoupage gel because It'll help those corners stick down. So I'm just right here on the edge, kind of just saturating it and working it down. Oh, there we got a cut. Now we're working. We'll come back through and sand any weird edges, but you see how I'm getting that nice tear there? It looks kind of organic. This is all gonna get a pretty heavy distress. Oh, we're slipping over here. We pulled it off where the leg was. We're gonna have to put that back down. I didn't have enough decoupage on that. All right, time out. We gotta let that dry. Put some more stuff on there. We'll goop it on real good because that leg's thin. All right, we're coming along. I found that with all this curvy detail, it's easier if I just get it wet and then come along here and just pull on the edge with my finger. That's working a lot better and faster. That's probably the biggest reason I started doing it like this. It was taking too long. And we just push those frayed edges back down. It's coming along. So our horse is looking pretty awesome over there. And I've got some scraps left over from the wet cut. So we're going to do this heart as well. We make sure, let's see, that's going to be facing up on that side. Okay, we'll let that dry for a minute. So we're gonna use, the, I want you to do the top part. 
Oh, the top I part. need little elements for the little rolling pin. Oh, gotcha. And then we're gonna do whichever one you like of these two, birds and bees, and then I brought you La Champagne for the big one. Is it campaign or champagne? I think it's campaign. I don't know, I'm not French. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Work your magic. Oh, what a dog. He just came down with the whole turtle in his- Is there, did you really do that? Did you take that turtle? Hang on, but let's get back All to right. focusing here. Okay, focus. Okay, you ready? Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> we drove crazy, but I think it's okay. You did it. It's fine. <laughs> this one's slippy. It's small in my hands. It turned out cute. All right, so we're inking up birds and bees. We're going to use that one next. Because Zeb says we have not used this one as much. Yeah. And this one is still available as of right now at jamierayvintage.com. So make it look awesome. All right, show them what they got. Okay, we're gonna let these dry and then I'll just paint the handles. So I'm using Blue Hills to paint the handle on this. It's a pretty blue. I've been using it more. It's very spring. It is very spring. Let the razor blade cleaning commence. It's actually pretty satisfying. Yeah. So I'm using ephemeral melange. And I think this is perfect because that made this look super old and distressed. So now I'm gonna make it look like it's got a bunch of old like advertising on it. So I'm just gonna layer on a bunch of different pieces here until it's nice and cute. It'll look kind of like old luggage kind of. I've got a theme going on. I brought the red and black through on this. I brought the red and black through on that. That's how it's going today. You're like a boss. I'm just over here doing things the way you tell me because you're <laughs> rocking it. <laughs> sure. Although the, the, the upholstery is all me. That was my idea. I'm hoping it turns out like I want it to. It should go quick. The bottom looks good on the bench. So now a lot of people are going to say, are you going to seal this? I am not because it will be cloudy and there's no reason to seal it. You can totally just make sure it's all pushed down and they'll just have to spot clean it. I have put tons of stuff on glass. Never had a problem. Now, can you scrub it with a brush? No, but why would you scrub it with a brush? <laughs> it looks like an old display case. I like it. All right, let's piece this thing together. Now I gotta figure out exactly where I want the horse to sit. Oh, we're tight. We're a little tight. Why is that so tight? Oh. Did you paint in the hole? No, but there's some gunk in there. Okay. Today it's very like primitive shabby chic. So I love it. If you don't love it, just pretend that we didn't distress anything and we're good. Okay. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. That. Yeah, you might not need to put a screw in there because it didn't have anything on it before. It had a nail in it. Oh, it had a nail. Yeah. Keep going down. More. More. It was up too high before. Keep going. Keep going. Because if you if you think that's a carousel horse, it's got to be up high enough that like a kid could sit on it, right? And you already got to put that top. There's no room for their head. I go down like half an inch. Okay, that's good, right there. Right there? Mm-hmm. That's so cute. I am so gonna cute. put a screw in it just in case. I guess I should use a different word besides super cute. Um, it's darling. Oh, okay. Because somebody commented the other day that I say that super cute too much. All right. Good job, Mr. Ray. Well, look at that. It's like spring and Valentine's Day with the heart, but not overly Valentine's Day, so you can use it in other applications, I feel like. The last thing we're gonna do tonight is we are going to recover this. This is a Laura Ashley sheet. It is um, retro, maybe vintage, like from the like early, late 80s, early 90s, however you wanna classify that. And it's beautiful. I picked it up at the bins and we get asked all the time if I wash the stuff. Yes, the very first thing that happens before pictures are taken, before anything else happens, is everything goes through the wash. It usually takes me a day to two days to get it all done. So this is all washed and we're going to recover this.
zips, just attaching this cloth from to the bottom. It just makes it look a little bit more neat. And we did trim off like the excess fabric. So I'm screwing this back on. So when we ship it, we will take these legs off and wrap them up and put them inside. So that way it ships nice and flat. All right, it is the next morning. We're getting everything into the shop that we painted yesterday. We will show it to you so you can see how cute it all is. And we're gonna give you a little shop tour and show you what's new. Here are all the projects that we finished yesterday. I was a little skeptical of the carousel horse, but legit in true Zeb fashion, you had a plan. You're, you're the man that can shabby chic like nothing else. I had else. to really distress it up to get the look I wanted, but I feel like it works good. It turned out really good. I actually was a little unsure of this one too because he distressed it a lot. But now that I put this transfer on it, it looks like an old apothecary cabinet. And I just like, I am kind of sad that it's sold now. <laughs> Zeb finished up the evil skeever pan. So you saw how we refresh cast iron. We do this all the time. It's especially valuable to older cast iron. And then the tote that we did on Waste Not Wednesday, these are totes are already sold. This one I just listed. So when you're watching this, it might still be available. And this one um, bird and bee rolling pin, I'm gonna update the photo for that one. This probably to me is like the best because it's a vintage Laura Ashley sheet that we thrifted at the bins. It was in perfect condition. And then paired with that base, it's just bright and fresh. And I really hope that whoever bought it, it looks great in their home because we're gonna get it shipped out. Here is our Valentine's display. I know we've shown it before, but now that we've got these beautiful quilts in it, it just looks so good. You can see some of our most recent thrifting finds in here and a bunch of our thrift flips. We'll switch this out and make it more um, Eastery after next week, but some of the same color schemes will stick. We've also got beautiful dishes wedged in here amongst our Easter Valentine's Day display. If you haven't been here before, this is our woods area. So we have our dough bowls, our rolling pins, um, our bunny dough bowls. We just restocked those. We still have a couple of teapots from England and some, some of the clocks. These are the ink wells. We probably sold a couple hundred of these and this is all that's left. So this is this fun little display area here. Enamel, enamel, enamel. Like we buy it a lot, but this is about all we can seem to keep in stock. This display is relatively new. This is the piece that we picked up last or last month, I think. And we redid our French provincial chest. And these are actually from last year. I went upstairs and grabbed a couple of projects from last year from Easter. We've got one big piece of art on display because we don't have room for two easels right now. But this, I hope, gives you an idea of what you can expect to be able to do with your thrift finds. Here is, this is from the bins. We just put the IOD transfer on it and then threw some lavender in it. Look how cute that is. This is one of Zeb's canvas prints. I always think that woman isn't dressed. She is wearing a dress. <laughs> but that we framed out. And then we mix it in. We do buy some things wholesale. So we carry the antique candle company line. These are actually some of our best, best sellers. All of our grain sack fabric. Here's another display that's got a ton of like thrifted and flipped items. You'll notice a ton of greenery in here. You see us thrifting it all the time. We generally don't list it because the shop needs it. <laughs> Don't mind this. These are all of our little succulents waiting to be planted. We stick them in the window so they get some light. This display is always changing. This is like the myriad of thrifted dishes. Lots of fun stuff there. This display is probably one of my absolute favorites. This is our blue and white table. This is all of like our antique and found. We've got canning jars, French and American there but it really just, just show places all of the beautiful cobalt blue. You can see the blue and white dishes look so good with this cobalt that we've thrifted here in the States. Some of this we brought back from England. And then the blue and white carries here. I actually think I wanna do all blue and white on here. So I might pull out some of the brown here and then move over some of the new pieces we got. I told you I'd show you new things. We recently set up a um, partnership with Spode 
We just got this creamer. This creamer is, let's see, $13.95. Sweet little bunny on it. Probably my favorite spode piece that we're carrying now is this cake plate. This one is actually made in the UK. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the base. Spode Italian. Isn't that just beautiful? So we're gonna start carrying more spode pieces. I'm taking it easy because they are a little bit more high end. I think this piece is $55.95, which I actually th don't think is bad for a spode cake plate. And then we also have these travel mugs. We've got this big one. This is, I think, 16 ounces. And this one is $25.95. It's got a beautiful scene on there. Just makes you feel a little fancy with an everyday item. And this is just the smaller 12 ounce one and it's $21.95. Beautiful pieces. So excited to have those. We did restock our jadeite. So we've got our mini hens. These little ones are so cute. They're $15.95. And we're gonna be carrying some of their items. I'm starting out with just the cake plate and this creamer and these travel mugs, but I hope to expand if they are popular. They're beautiful heirloom pieces. Another new item we got was these chunky knit chenille blankets. I think this one is like 90, oh, 82. And it's in dove gray. It's beautiful and soft and the color will carry into spring. Another thing we got in that was new is this cute basket. It's, I think we, it does not come with the eggs, but I just wanted to display it that way. It's $16.95. Look how cute that is with our bunny dough bowl. And then we've got our little bunny creamer. These are in the thrifted collection. These are so cute. You guys know I love enamel. I, gray speckled enamel to find it like actually old is so expensive. And I found a source for these pictures there. It's a really good heavy weight. And the price point is pretty good, $43.95. Way less expensive than paying $100 plus dollars for antique gray speckled enamel. We also picked up these little bowls. They're $8.95. They're normally like $12 or $15, but we got a good deal on them. So these ones are really well priced. And last but not least, we have these marmalade crocs. This one is huge, marmalade and mustard. These are re repops or whatever you want, reproductions. Um, and this one is $26. If this was antique, this would be $150 to $200, probably more like $200 because of the condition is good. And this one is $20.95. And again, that would be every bit of $100. So I think these are going to be good sellers for us because they look like the real thing, but they're a little less expensive. And last but not least, we have these queen size shams. Sorry, it's a little wrinkled. I just pulled it out of the package. They're $13.95 each. And I thought they would be great because we're selling so many quilts. I just got white simple shams that people can pair with their colored quilts. And then this one has ties in the back. $13.95 each and these are standard size. Here's what it would look like if it wasn't all wrinkled. Look how cute. Hopefully coming to the shop, watching us thrift, make over, and see what the items look like in their new location gives you guys an idea of what can be done with these thrift flips and finds to make them a little nicer, a little more high end. Because when you see them in those bins <laughs> and at yeah. the thrift store, they don't look so hot. It's always my favorite part, uh, thrifting something and being like, eh, that doesn't look very good. And then bringing it home and seeing the vision I had for it come to life. Sometimes you just need a little paint and a little vision and you can give things new life. We're gonna drop a link to the new to JRV collection in case you're interested in any of our new items, as well as a link to our thrifted items. Everything in the shop is listed. So if you saw something you can't find, just comment and let us know. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY and thrifting. We'll see you on the next episode.